Republican Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. He's likely to be named the new chairman of the Senate's Chief Government Oversight Panel. Thanks so much for joining me, Senator. I appreciate it. Good morning, Kristen. I want to start with something that you told the Wall Street Journal. You said, quote, there's no sense in rolling out things we won't agree on as the first thing. So given that, as a good faith effort, shouldn't the Republicans drop this repeal effort? Well, I would think what President Obama ought to drop is his, you know, threatened unilateral action on. on uh, Hold on, before we get to immigration, Senator, Anderson, I'm asking you about health care. We'll get to no, immigration. No, 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 but but on health care, well, you know the well, president's well, listen, not going to sign I, 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 it into law. Listen, I come from the business world. I've done a lot of negotiating. And the way I always started my negotiation is I figured out everything we agreed on first. So I think both sides ought to concentrate on the areas of agreement. And, and, and that would start a process that I think would be helpful and healing. So let's concentrate on those things. We'll develop relationships, we'll develop a level of trust. So when we finally come to those areas of disagreement, it's going to be easier to find common ground. So let's first start by figuring out things we agree on. Neither side should be throwing you know, a monkey wrench into that process. So you are essentially saying you don't want to see this repeal effort off the bat, just to be clear. Now, what, what the speaker is saying is, is very, very legitimately, we should be certainly showing the American public where we differ with this president. And let's face it, Republicans are united in, in really disliking, and you know, we all campaign against the health care law. It's going to do a great deal of damage to our health care system. There's nothing wrong for us bringing those votes up. If, if we can't get the Democrat backing in the Senate, it won't pass the Senate, and President Obama doesn't have to sign it. But there's nothing wrong with us showing the American people where we stand on that issue. On the other on the other hand, President Obama in immigration, he's got the executive authority uh, to do something, and that will poison the well, and that actually would, would take effect. And that would be, I think, very unfortunate if he decided to do that. All right, well, let's talk about immigration. Why not get an immigration bill passed so that President Obama doesn't have to take unilateral action on immigration? If you look at the polls, a majority of American people say they want immigration reform. Well, I think the American people first want us to secure the border, which is the first step in any comprehensive approach to immigration. There are plenty of things on immigration we can agree on. We should all be in agreement that we need to secure our border, not only for, to solve the immigration problem, but as a public health and safety issue, also a national security issue. So let's do that. There's a great deal of agreement in terms of high-skilled visa programs. Let's do that. I, I think we need a robust guest worker program. Mm -hmm. We should eliminate or, or severely restrict all the incentives for illegal immigration that's what a guest worker program would do so there are areas of agreement let's concentrate on those things it's Democrats quite honestly that are holding our border security hostage for a guarantee of citizenship and I come from Wisconsin there's a lot of immigrants there I've never yet had an immigrant ask me for citizenship they just just don't want us to deport their mom and dad or their husband and wife we're not going to do that but let's first start securing the border all right, Senator, let me move on to your plans for the future. You have said uh, about your plans for investigations uh, in the committee's next chair, you've said, quote, you're not interested in show trials, but in defining problems. Uh, slightly different tone mm -hmm. than we're hearing from your counterpart, Daryl Issa, who's issued nearly 100 subpoenas, rather, against the administration. So based on what you've said, does that mean that you're not planning to bring up uh, any of those subpoenas again? Well, the Homeland Security Government Affairs Committee is pretty broad jurisdictions. It's really two committees in one. Homeland Security, we've got a lot of serious issues there. You know, securing our borders, cybersecurity. Uh, there are a lot of things we have to really concentrate on there. And I, I want to work very cooperatively with uh, Secretary Jay Johnson. I think he's a good appointment, a serious, serious man. And so we want to make sure that he's successful at keeping America safe. On the government affairs uh, part of that committee, that is the oversight, that is the investigation part of that, and, and we'll, we'll have to maintain and, and carry out our responsibilities there as well. But you know, as a business guy, I don't like duplication of effort. The House is already uh, quite a bit further in, involved in some of these areas. Now, I'll let them take the lead on some of that, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to uh, certainly absolve myself of the responsibility or our committee of, of our, its responsibility of oversight. It's a very serious uh, uh, part of our, our responsibility. And I I think the American people deserve the truth on a number of issues. Is there any investigation that is imminent? I mean, can you give us specifics about what you mean? 
Well, first, I want to use committee to hold hearings to highlight problems, to define problems, because that's the first step in solving any problem. You have to admit you have one, you have to properly define it. So government affairs is also involved with things like regulatory reform. One of the big drags in our economy is overregulation. So I certainly want to be looking for common ground. You know, Democrat senators have businesses coming to their offices as well, saying, you know, this regulation is killing businesses in, in their states. All right, so let's Senator, find let those just... areas of common ground. But it, go ahead. Uh, that's, I just want to get you on one foreign policy because we are running out of time. Reports yesterday that President Obama secretly wrote a letter to Iran's supreme leader uh, urging him to work with the U.S. to fight ISIS. What do you make of that letter? What was your reaction? Does it help or hurt? Well, it's just further demonstration of this uh, president's weakness in foreign policy. You know, I, I think he pretty well blew those negotiations when he relaxed sanctions and basically implicitly agreed to allow uh, Iran to continue to enrich uranium. So, you know, he's put himself in a very bad position from a negotiation standpoint, and then Syria and, and Iraq blew up. And, uh, you know, th this, is, this is showing the, the failure of his foreign, foreign policy, his, his leading from behind, his, his strategy of uh, peace through withdrawal is simply not working. It's not going to work with Iran either. Well, Senator, quickly, based on those reports, the president did stress that any cooperation would be contingent on getting uh, a deal done on Iran's nuclear program. So why not try to enlist Iran's help if it helps to defeat ISIS, if that is the broader goal here? Well, again, I... I I'm concerned about that deal that he's doing with Iran that basically leaves in place their ability to, to uh, enrich uranium and weaponize, uh, uh, you know, have a nuclear weapons program because that's the only reason they would be enriching uranium. So again, I, I think this is a very dangerous uh, spot we're in because of the, the weakness of this administration. All right, Senator Ron Johnson, thank you so much for your time this morning. We really appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. Well, with Republicans now set to run both the House and